Hello there. This is a reading from my novel, A Passionate Spirit, which is widely available online both as a paperback and as an ebook. And today I'm reading from chapter one. Zoe ran through the wood in gathering dusk, her heart racing. She clutched the child's hand, which kept slipping out of hers. Sweat drenched her blouse, sticking it to her jacket, despite the dank chill in the air. They pounded along a narrow, bramble-choked path. Zoe winced and the child sobbed as spiky stems tore at their clothes and flesh, drawing blood. Their breathing came fast and jagged. They had miles ahead of them with no prospect of rest, running for their lives. They came out into a field. Her chest burning and tears stinging her eyes, Zoe paused to wipe sweat and hair away, both from her face and from the child's. Before them was a ditch, filled with mud, half hidden by low-hanging field maples. She twisted round and saw their pursuer burst out from among the trees on the opposite side of the field. Zoe seized the child in her arms and plunged into the ditch, fighting her way through the twigs and branches of the trees beyond it. The child screamed and clung to her, soaked in mud, scratched and bruised. Zoe sat up in bed with a shriek. Theo woke, rolled over and held her close. Zoe, Zoe, he moaned. Not another nightmare, surely. Yes, she whispered. The child. We were running through a wood. Someone was trying to kill us. Theo's heart beat fast against hers. He looked at her, perplexed, stroking her hair and face. Calmer now, he said, after a couple of minutes. She nodded. You're safe. I love you, he said. They both lay down and Theo went back to sleep. But Zoe lay awake for a long while, thinking about the dream. It was still only three in the morning. What's the matter, Alice? asked Zoe in the reception office later, gazing at her colleague, seated diagonally across from her. Alice's milk chocolate coloured skin gleamed in the light from the window, as did her thick black hair, tied in a high ponytail. Her forehead creased into a look of concern. Sorry, she said, that dream of yours gives me the creeps. I don't mean to scare you any more, Zoe, but, well, I've had a few weird things happen to me lately. She stopped, as the reception door opened and two guests came in carrying their luggage. Zoe jumped up. Brian and Jasper, she cried, ready to leave. It's been so good getting to know you both this week. Thanks, Zoe, said Brian. It's been an amazing week. We've both found so much here, said Jasper. Even though I made a mess of my marbling technique, remarked Brian, and Jasper's pot broke in the kiln. We got something far more important out of it, though, added Jasper. Peace, tranquility, soul. Zoe smiled warmly at them both. I'm so pleased, she said. Before we go, said Brian, we need to tell you something. As we crossed the courtyard, we saw a seriously scruffy guy stumbling along the path past the barn. Didn't look like a guest, added Jasper. Brian laughed. Zoe pursed her lips. Scruffy, you say? Yeah, looked a bit like a tramp. Zoe glanced at Alice, who'd raised her eyebrows. Which direction was he heading? she asked. Away from us, towards the lawn, as if he'd already crossed the courtyard, but you'd have seen him if he'd gone past your office window. OK, said Zoe, thanks for telling us. I'll go and check him out. She saw him as soon as she walked out of reception. He'd now reached the lawn. That day they had three guests on the property, those who'd chosen to stay on from the previous week. Apart from them, there should only be staff around. The new guests for next week's creative arts course were not due to arrive until the following day. And he looked nothing like any of their three remaining guests. A twig cracked beneath his feet. She hurried after him, calling out, Excuse me! He turned and glared at her. 
In the past, Zoe had preferred to keep her experience of vagrants safely behind the doors of a drop-in centre. She'd helped out in one during her university vacation five years before in South London. But here in this beautiful Gloucestershire Valley, he seemed strangely out of place. Zoe guessed he'd made his way along the lane from the nearest village a mile away, where perhaps he'd have been hoping for a food handout. She imagined he was now trying his luck here too. He wore a long, filthy raincoat. Bloodshot eyes held her in scrutiny. Thick beard and matted hair, half full bottle of wine in his hand. She was determined to be kind and helpful. Hello, she said. Can I help you? He grunted. A stench of sweat came to her nostrils. What do you want? she asked softly. The tramp moved close and opened his mouth as if to speak. She smelt his foul breath. Then he spat on the ground, in front of her feet. She recoiled. Don't do that, she said. I just want to help you. He threw her a look of contempt and slunk away, this time towards the south, disappearing along the path which led past the converted goose house in the direction of the car park. She drew in her breath. If he'd been less aggressive, she'd have been only too happy to give him some food, and now she was worried that he might be tempted to break into one of the cars. She'd need to find Bernie, their veteran house manager, and ask for help. She turned quickly towards the courtyard. She'd seen Bernie earlier going to do some work in one of the cabins. Then she saw a child in front of her. She stopped dead. A little girl. Long, fair hair, wearing a green dress. She seemed to be four or five years old, and Zoe saw no adult with her. As centre administrator, Zoe knew the name of each guest. There was no child among them. Hello, said Zoe. She smiled. Are you lost? Where's my daddy? asked the little girl. Your daddy, repeated Zoe. I don't know. What's his name? What does he look like? The child made no reply. Instead, she looked through Zoe. Confused, Zoe swung round, expecting to see the child's father, but there was no one. Then Vito barked. Distracted, Zoe glanced away towards the east. Perhaps their golden Labrador had found the tramp. But no, he bounded alone amongst the lower branches of the conifer trees. Zoe turned back again to the little girl. She'd gone. Zoe's mouth went dry. She rubbed her eyes. But when she put her hands down again, there was still no sign of the child. Zoe hadn't expected her to move so fast. <laughs>